This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. We've been looking at the subject of favor in challenging times. I don't think we need a prophet or a seer to tell us that we are living in very challenging times. Um, in seasons like this, we see so many things happening, lack, shortages, fear of one thing or the other, terror, all sorts of things are happening. But child of God, I want you to be encouraged because the favor of God that is upon your life, it will at last that season in your life in Jesus' name. And one of the very important thoughts <clears throat> I want to share with us this morning, you know, because when challenging times come, you need to know who you are and whose you are. Let's start from Job chapter 5 from verse 20 to 26. When you read this scripture, it kind of summarizes what a challenging um, time looks like or season. He said, In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war, from the power of a sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt and thou shalt visit the habitation and shall not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like a shock of corn cometh in its season. Summarily, whatever happens around you, God said here that it will be well with you. Summarily, whatever happens around you, God does not stop with it being well with you. He said it will be well with your children. Summarily, whatever happens in this world, God said you will not die prematurely. You will not die like a chicken. You will not die under a trailer. He said you are going to make it to the end. And he said in famine you will laugh. He said when people are saying it's not working, you will be laughing. Now, why is God saying all this prophetically in Scripture to us? Because the, um, the, it's very clear that one of the things I want you to note down is that you cannot substitute the substituted. Therefore, you will outlast your challenging season. You cannot do what? Substitute the substituted. Now, the Euro is going on now. Some of you have been watching it. I hope your team has been doing well. I won't tell you my team. Anyway. But I noticed that no matter what your name is, no matter if you are the captain of the club, Maybe you are Ronaldo, you are Harry Kane, or whatever, you know, or Van Dyke, or whatever your name is, and you are the captain of your club. When they substitute you, you go and sit down on the bench. That means your trouble, your running around, your wahala, as we say here, for that game has finished. You are seated. Somebody has to enter and finish the game. When God realized that Tunde Bolanta could not make it on his own, that his sin and failure have separated him from God, 
and he has too many troubles he can, doesn't know how to handle. God said, Jesus Christ, come and go to the cross and substitute that boy. Let that boy come and sit at your right hand. Go and become who he was so he can become who you are. A substitution happened in your life that cannot be reversed. Because when Jesus entered the ring, the Bible says he was wounded for your transgressions, he was bruised for your iniquities, and the chastisement of your peace was upon him, and by the stripes that wounded him, you were healed. Ephesians 1, 3, when he went for you, the Bible says you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He became what we were that we may become who he is now. Is there an amen somewhere? I, I had this story some years ago when uh, a man was in the airport, I think it was Lagos Airport, and um, he was going to fly to a certain destination in the country. And as he was going, another man ran up to him and said, listen, please, I have an appointment that I cannot miss. I beg you, allow me to use your ticket. This was in those days. You know now they use ID. In those days, if you have ticket, you just enter. So the man said, well, you know, what I'm even going to do, man, is not important. It's not so important. Are you sure? He said, take my ticket. What happened? He substituted that guy. He sat on the seat that was meant for that guy. He ate the food that was meant for that guy. He drank the water that was meant for that guy. He sat next to the person that guy was supposed to sit next to. Unfortunately, that plane crashed and that man died his death. When I say the substitute, um, the substitute cannot be substituted. Yeah? The substitute cannot be <laughs> I'm mixing it up. The substitute cannot be substituted. That means he's gone in for you and you can't go back in. I want to say to you, when Jesus went to the cross, he became your substitute. The substitute cannot be substituted. That means if violence is happening, if terror is happening, if they are destroying people, if they are kidnapping them, if they are doing violence around you, your substitute has died your death. When there's poverty flying around, you can say Jesus became poor so that through his poverty I may be abundantly supplied. I say Jesus became poor so that through his poverty I may be abundantly supplied. Child of God, you have been substituted by Jesus and whatever the enemy is doing now, I want to say to you, the substitute cannot be substituted. Jesus took it once and and once was big enough because the creator of the universe took your place. There's nobody bigger than that. And I want to announce to somebody who has faith to believe what I'm saying this morning that you, you are Jesus substitutes you. The substitute cannot be substituted. You have or you have been substituted by Jesus. And whatever flies in this world, you are going to see the end of this year. You are going to see beyond the end of this year. Economic hardship will not destroy you. Your children will not be disgraced. You will not be brought down. When there is a casting down, there must be a lifting up. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying today? When there is a casting down, there must be a lifting up. The substitute cannot be substituted. Jesus was the substitute. And you cannot... Oh! I believe my message more than many of you are believing it. Because you need to believe this kind of thing in the season we are living in. Because you are going to hear bad news here and bad news there. But remember, the substitute cannot be substituted. Lift your hand and give the Lord praise if you believe that. All right, let's add something else to this. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? One of the things when Jesus took our place... What I'm saying to you is that Jesus already took your place. You cannot go back there. Amen? The man who took somebody's seat on the plane, the person, let's go to Genesis 22. I don't know. I have a lot to share, but you can write it down. Maybe we'll read it another service. Genesis 22 from verse 10. 
Well, it's not a long reading. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called him out of the heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his hands. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered up for a burnt offering in the stead, in the, somebody say, in the stead, in the stead, or instead of his son. An exchange took place. So when God was telling the children of Israel, there's destruction in Egypt, everybody's dying, take a, a lamb to substitute you. They remember this story. Because without that ram that was provided, Israel would not have been a nation. Oh my God, give my people revelation this morning. This enters every area of our life. Finances, security, d destiny. Do you understand? Abraham was going to kill the boy. God said, don't touch him. I have somebody in the stead. I have a ram in the stead. So Isaac went home and kept laughing because the ram entered in his stead. Isaac prospered and became a wealthy man because of the ram in his stead. Your, your, your prosperity, the blessing of God upon your life, the favor of God upon your life is because Jesus went in your stead. The ram in the stead, the lamb in the stead of the children of Israel. And therefore I'm saying to you, because Jesus has stepped into the ring for you, the full penalty, all the, all the things we needed to face, he has faced it. So when poverty and lack are showing up around you, you can say, Jesus took that as well. You can say, Jesus took that as well. I say, you can say, Jesus took that as well. I say, you can say, Jesus took that as well. You can say, Jesus took that as well. You can say, Jesus took that as well. One of the mistakes we make is that many of us are not talking. This covenant is activated by speech. If you don't talk, nothing's going to happen. Let me show you something else. Let's go to James. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God can give you a word, but you need to believe it. One man was giving us a testimony in Norway. I think our first meeting. The man said his, himself, his wife, and uh, their son, grown-up guy, probably, I don't know, I can't remember his age, but a, a mature person. He said, you, the last time you came here, you prophesied over me. He said, you said my son, who had been a, a drug addict for 18 years, will be saved within three months. In my mind, I thought, did I say that? He said, yes. I said, hey, hey. You see where God, they talk sometimes, they, they, they baffle person. I said, I really said that. He said, well, here's the boy. 18 years addiction is gone. And here is, here, here, here is this boy. He's now saved. He got saved within three months. God can say something. What you do about it is very, very important. God can come down. Jesus can come to your house and say, I am Jesus Christ. You will not lack again in your life. You say, Jesus, do you not understand Nigeria economy? That's almost of what we tell Jesus. Jesus, do you understand Nigeria? Do you know the price of Gary and rice? This short time, by the time I came, I saw that things have opened mouth again. <laughs> you know, open mouth. <sighs> but Jesus said, in the time of farming, he said, you what? Some of you practice a little laugh. <laughs> Some of you, okay, you don't understand. Jesus said, in the time of farming, did he say you will cry? I said, practice a little laugh. What was it? Pastor, you don't know my problem. I said, Jesus said, in the time of famine, you shall yeah. tell your neighbor, practice a little laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Sometimes when you are holding the Bible, you think you are a madman. Say, Jesus, you say we shall laugh. I don't feel like laughing, you know, I want to cry. But I said, you will laugh. I said, laughter is your portion in the name of Jesus. Now, let's go to James so that we can learn principle. Another testimony 
That was in Slovakia. We finished the service, and a lady came up to me and said, um, sir, show me one picture like that. I said, what is this? He said, well, her friends, the last time you were here, he said, that's why those people don't want to leave us alone. He said, the last time you were here, this couple, they're in their 40s, and they have been trying to have a child. The child was not coming, and the doctors were not positive. So you pick the man from the congregation. So even if we pick you from the congregation, you say, maybe they make a mistake. Those are people, even if God called you and they say, God, you make a mistake. God has already picked your name in the Bible. When he said, in the time of famine, you shall laugh, it's as good as Jesus standing in front of you and saying, you will laugh in the time of famine if you believe that word of God. He said, none shall be barren, none shall any cast they are young. It's your word. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. It's Jesus talking to you. I choose the word of God over the word of Satan. I choose the word of God over what economy is telling me. The man said, that, that lady said, you pick them from the congregation and you say, you see them holding their baby. I've never seen them before in my life, but God showed me. He said, this is the picture. The baby was born two weeks ago. So you read the Bible, God speaks to you prophetically, but where you are standing is still where you are standing. Pastor, there are no level. Pastor, half or do. Clean that mouth. Because when God says something, he has the power, he has the capacity to bring it to pass. An ordinary man can tell you, tomorrow come and collect 10,000. Abi? If you know the caliber of that person, you will say, praise the Lord. You start planning what you will do with that 10,000. Is that not true? If some husband tell their wives, tomorrow 10,000, the woman will say, eh, you said it yesterday. Last month, oh, you have not paid. You are even owing myself. But the person who has promised you is owing nobody money. He doesn't owe the oxygen we are breathing. He do, God does not need to go to a bank and say, please borrow me oxygen. Borrow me uh, sunshine. It has been here. Do you know who we are talking about? He's the creator of the universe. He has no beginning. He has no end. When he makes a promise over your life, even in a season like this, he has the ability, he has the capacity to bring it to pass. In your family, you will not beg. I said in your family, you will not beg. In this season, you are going to laugh because Jesus has paid the price over your life. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you scripture. We'll see what we can take today. Hmm. Your tongue will determine your destination in troubled times. Your tongue will do what? There are some times you will feel like saying what you should not say. James chapter number 3, from verse 2 to 6. Um, let's read a bit. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Let's try to digest that a little bit. Your tongue will determine your destination. Your tongue, it will determine your destination. The steering of the car is like the tongue. 
if I want to go left and I turn my car steering right, where will I go? I'll go right. If I wanted to go right and I turn my steering left, the Bible says that you will decree a thing and it shall be what? Established. Friends, I don't know how much, but it's very important that we emphasize the importance of what is coming out of our mouth in this kind of season. If, you, if, if the word of God is not coming out of your mouth, you know what will be coming out of your mouth? What you are seeing around you. Even if there's nothing in the house, keep declaring, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Even if what you are believing for is delayed, keep declaring, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaking, nor a seed begging bread. If the situation does not look the way it should look, keep saying with your mouth that the angels are ministering spirits. They are sent forth to minister for me. Therefore, my angels go for me in the name of Jesus. A man of God shared a testimony one time. He said he saw his angel standing like this. And then the angel said, dispatch me. He said, go to a restaurant, eh? a good restaurant. When you come in, there's a menu. You say, welcome, sir. You sit down. And the person gives you the menu. And you are looking at the person. The person says, Oga, sister, the words of our mouths are very, very important. I may not be able to read that scripture. But when Jesus was going to Jairus' house, Right? When his daughter died. Remember that story? The woman with the issue of blood testified for so long of the mercies of God that her testimony was long enough that somebody died. <laughs> she kept talking. You know, women, people are gifted. You have to elaborate. You have to, you have to put sugar. You have to put salt. You have to put pepper. A man will say, I was blind and now I can see. A woman will say, hey! She will first roll on the ground for like five minutes. Dance, home dance. I say, if you know what God did for me, it's okay, we need you. Otherwise, our life will be boring. Women, I don't say amen. Our life will be boring now. A man comes back from work. The wife says, how was work? The man says, fine. Good. You want to repeat, how was work? You haven't spoken to her. She needs to know the nitty gritty. Who greeted you? Who did you greet? Who brought the contract? How did you sign it? What is left? What is remaining? She must know. Women have, they must know. The man say, fine. Why are you not communicating with me? Anyway, maybe it will help somebody. These women talk, they came and said, uh, Jairo, your daughter is dead. If you read it, maybe we'll, get, we'll look at it. The Bible said, Jesus told him, fear not, only believe. It's called the silence of faith. If you notice, Jairus did not say anything in that bad situation. The guy put padlock. Put padlock. Because he's standing before the answer. You can't be standing before Jesus and say, they say he's dead though. Your mouth, your tongue will determine your destination. So it's important that you know who has promised to keep you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you that you may boldly say. One time I was praying some years ago about something. And the Lord asked me a question. He said, who thought of the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night when the children of Israel went on their journey in the wilderness. I'd never thought about that before. It was not Moses' thought. It was God that thought. When you are going to have a baby as a family, you prepare. 
the Bible says God has prepared a table before you. Before you were born, everything about your life was arranged. Your business was arranged. Your children arranged. Your children's children arranged. God is a great organizer. He has arranged everything about your future, and the season you are in cannot change divine arrangements. For you to know how big this God is, he operates on a canvas that you and I cannot comprehend. Amen? I said he's operating on the canvas that we cannot comprehend. I don't know if you'll be interested in this, but it might help somebody's faith. There are about two trillion galaxies. Huh? A galaxy is made up of gas, stars, solar, their own uh, solar system held together, and two trillion galaxies. We are on one galaxy, and we are just one of the, they've estimated 100 billion to 400 billion stars in our galaxy. We are just one of those things in our galaxy, in one corner. Eh? When God is measuring, he doesn't use hand. He doesn't use inches. He doesn't use centimeter. He doesn't use meter. He doesn't use miles. He doesn't use kilometer. He uses light years. The distance a, a light will travel in a year. You know the distance a light will travel in a year? 5.88 trillion miles. 9.46 trillion kilometers. Hmm? That's the self that has to travel. To move within our local government area that God put us. Eh? You multiply that by a hundred thousand. Well, in one little galaxy, far. one little gov local government area. A God that made all these things cannot put food on your table. He cannot clothe you again. He cannot look after you again. Have you ever woken up one morning and said, Father, when we wake up tomorrow, let there be light. Oh, in Nigeria, we pray for light because <laughs> you pray for light, you are waiting to iron your clothes. The light has come. We do everything. Sharp, 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 sharp. But since you've been alive, have you ever woken up one day and said, Father, let the, let the day break? Anytime I see another breaking, I say, mm, thank you. Every time, every time I see another breaking of the day, I say, thank you. The entire wealth of the nations of the earth cannot bring you another breaking of the day. The entire wealth of the nations of the earth cannot put sun in the sky, cannot put moon in the sky. And the person that owns them all says, it's your father this morning. And I want to announce to somebody who has the faith to believe it, that in this season, Jesus is your substitute. He has paid the price. And I want to say to you, he will meet every need in your life according to his riches in glory. The one looking impossible today, he's going to make it possible. If you believe that, lift your hand and begin to thank the Lord with me this morning. Begin to thank him. You know what you are facing? Start thanking the Lord for provision. Start thanking the Lord for favor. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Thank him. It's Thanksgiving. We have come to do this morning. Lord, I thank you that you are going to do more than I can ask. I thank you you are going to do more than I can think. Ephesians 3.20 a God who can do exceedingly above. Give him thanks. Say, Father, I'm grateful. I'm going to pray for you now. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, keep your hands up. We have lifted our hands in surrender this morning. Hmm. We thank you because you have never needed any man to tell you to put on lights. 
for the sun or light for the day to break. What you said in the beginning is still working for us. And so, Lord, what you have spoken to us by your eternal word is still working for us. So, Lord, for the needs of this season, for whatever is flying around, Jesus, our substitute, cannot be substituted. And for that reason, we are far from terror. We are far from violence. We are far from accidents. We are far from kidnapping. We are far from every work of the enemy. Because Jesus died. By the same token, every spirit of poverty, of I don't have, hand to mouth, is not our portion. Because Jesus became poor. So that through his poverty, we may be abundantly supplied. So I pray for every home that has a need today. And every human, every person, under the sound of my voice that has a, a need today. We give you praise because you meet all our needs. You are our shepherd, we shall not want. The Ephesians 3.20, you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. Because Jesus is our favor in troubled times. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30pm and on Sunday by 7am and 8.30am respectively at Restoration International Conference Center RICC Romanew Extension Kaduna South God bless you